We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Down to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It's hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
loving God, your son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. that you found it and that you are engaged in God's Word. I'm Bishop Laura Barbins and this sermon series comes to you from your Synod staff for eight weeks this summer or eight weeks any time that you might want to use it. So welcome to this sermon today on another chapter in Ephesians. I wonder if we might all be able to agree that we are living in divisive times. That might actually be an understatement, yes? If you say one thing, there is definitely at least one other person in the room who will counter it with the exact opposite. And that leads to another statement, and then another counter statement, and so on, and so on, and so on. In fact, there's very little listening going on in our world right now. Instead, there's a lot of talking. And while I am not opposed to social media platforms, they do tend to heighten this escalating rhetoric. That is, we can post on social media without no, having to look into the eyes of anyone. We can throw something out into the universe and not see who it wounds. Now, before this era of social media, we had to look into the eyes of people when we said things. And we could see immediately what our words did. Because let's face it, that old adage is just wrong. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Huh, uh, yes, they can. And they do. Our words hurt. And we can be hurt by words. We can be separated one from the other by words. Then there's baptism. I preached on this not too many weeks ago, that in Christ, we are loved into a newness. And part of that newness is a newness in Christ, drawn together in Christ. We're drawn into that body. And in baptism, we're knit together into a very unique community of faith. There is also something deeper that comes with baptism. And that is that Christ comes to dwell with us. To dwell with us within us. Christ takes root in us. The Holy Spirit is stirred up within us. Just two weeks ago, if you were listening to the Ephesians text then, we were reminded by the writer of Ephesians as he prayed that according to the riches of God's glory, that God may grant you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Holy Spirit. 
and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. This is the gift we receive in baptism, that Christ is taking root in our lives and that we are sinking our roots deeper and deeper into God's love. And why is that? Well, because God loved us so much first. Not when we were good people or right people or had the best intentions. No, nope, God loved us, loves us when we're selfish people. For really, at baptism, who's more selfish than a little baby? God loves us when we're spiteful, when we neglect to love some of our neighbors, even, even in those times. God loves us. Always God is looking at us with love. More than a parent has for a child. Heck, more than a grandparent has for a child. And that is some powerful love, that grandparent love. God's love for us is more. Always more. In our baptism, we were claimed by God forever. May I even say signed, sealed, and delivered. Rooted in Christ and knit together with other believers in the Holy Spirit. Because it's good for us. It's the best for us. And God always wants what is best for us. And so it is that we come to the Ephesians text today because the text for today is built on the foundation that God loves us, Christ redeems us, and the Holy Spirit empowers us all for the purpose of being a witness in the world. Here's how the writer of Ephesians says it and says it in language that might be a little easier to hear than the actual scripture reading. What this adds up to then is this. No more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other. After all, when you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps. Each word a gift. Make a clean break with all the cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. That's how the writer of Ephesians thinks about the community of faith in Christ the baptized body of Christ, and how it is that we are with one another. Dear Church, the invitation in the reading from Ephesians today is to so trust that God is present in your community that you are able to tell one another the truth in love. That doesn't mean flinging words and caricatures and epithets around like stones. No, it means looking with love into the eyes of your neighbor and speaking gently in truth. And when that doesn't go well, and sometimes it won't, <laughs> know that it's okay to be angry. Just watch how you express that anger, 
We are called as disciples to watch our words to one another. It's not that we don't say anything unless you have something nice to say. Another adage I now question from my youth. But watch how it is and in what manner you are expressing yourself. Be gentle with one another. I know this is far easier said than done. It certainly takes practice to speak to one another in truth and gentleness. At its core, I think that's what the writer of Ephesians, even Jesus, and all the saints are trying to get us to look at people, really look at a person before we speak. To look into their eyes and see Christ living there. To look at their lives and know that they are beloved children of God. To look at their spirit and see the spirit. God is asking on this day, as you might be preparing to gather around the bread of life, to see one another with the eyes of God, to forgive one another as we have been forgiven, to guard our tongues and our thoughts, and to trust that Christ is with you in every facet of your life together to root and ground you in love. Many blessings, dear church. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Wisdom has built our house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, vineyards, and farms and all of creation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has employed her labors. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has invited her guests. May your presence be known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit of care to all who are seeking healing and comfort. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has set our table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on our paths, looking toward a bright future, while remembering where we have come. We give our thanks to those who have gone before us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Amen.